What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Black and Gold. This is High Brew Nation. As always, I'm joined with a gracious co-host. However, the typical ho- co-host, yeah, ho-host, co-host is not here with me tonight. Instead, I'm joined by uh, Christian Cummings, another co-host here at High Brew Nation. Um, before we get started, we actually wanted to dedicate this episode tonight to two hockey players who tragically lost their lives last weekend in Matt and Johnny Goudreau. May they rest in peace and may their family, um, you know, find solace. Um, we got a good episode to for you guys tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about the Tyler Johnson PTO, um, the captain's practices that has started, a little bit on some news that we heard about Brad Marchand, Swayman. Uh, in the state of the team. Um, Christian, how are we doing? Doing good. Doing good. Ready to get this Bruins going. Right, 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 yeah. Um, well, we're a month away, so there's that. If we look at it, so that's a positive thing. You know, Actually, we're a month away today, so today's the 8th. Um, so I'm just getting I'm just getting excited, you know, more and more as the season approaches, as training camp approaches. Um as we hear and see news coming out of captain's practices, rookie camp starts in, uh, on 9-11. Um, the prospect tournament games uh, start on the on 9-13 and run through the 16th. So there's just a lot of things to kind of look forward to as Bruins hockey ramps up. We just kind of also came out of, you know, Bruins Fan Fest that ran through um, August, which um, Vogel and I had a great opportunity to go to and have a uh, good time. We actually... <laughs> Barely missed Johnny Beecher, Patra, and Lorai as they were about to walk out. Had we been any like any later arriving um, to to the event, we we probably would have bumped into them in the parking lot, which would have been absolutely insane. So, I guess timing is bad on our end, um, right? But that that's how it goes. Outside of that, it was fun. So, fans, if you were actually able to go to that event. You know, you you know what I'm talking about. Seeing some of the players there, wonderful experience. A lot of the the games and everything else that they had kind of set up, and the merchandise and everything. And for those of you who could not go, it's something I definitely recommend going to in the future. It's it's a wonderful time, um, and you might even get to meet some players along the way. Um, let's start with Tyler Johnson um, because that was kind of a surprising PTO for me. Um, he is a Former Tampa Bay Lightning player, uh, two Stanley Cup championships, I believe, or is it three? I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, definitely at least two. I, at least two. Um, he played with uh, Sh- uh, Sh- yeah, yeah. Oh my god, English today is really awful Chicago. for me. Chicago, Chicago last year, um, and is now an unrestricted free agent under a PTO. Um, I wonder what that means. So right now we also don't have Swayman signed. We'll get to that. But say Swayman signs and we have enough money to get Tyler Johnson under a PTO. What do you think that that means for the likes of Patra, Lysel, Merkulov, Brazo, and Beecher, who are going to continue to kind of have to fight for that roster spot? I mean, it definitely it helped. It- helps to our depth if we can get him in the main roster but with those younger guys they can at least maybe go down to providence and get those top line minutes get that development well here's here's the thing so tyler johnson's likely going to be on the third line i don't see him being elevated to the second line right wing because he can play both center and right wing he is a right-handed shot i i have issues with sending some of those players back down, especially when you Beecher, who's in his very early 20s, Lysel in his very early 20s, Merkulov in his very early 20s, Patra, who's 19, Brazo, who's in his mid to late 20s, I can kind of see that and, you know, where we can say, yeah, you he can spend some time in Providence, but I'm, I'm really hard pressed to want to see the likes of Patra, Lysel, Merkulov, and Beecher really need to spend time down in Providence. I just think Sweeney, and maybe you'll agree with me on this, is that he tends to bring in a lot of veteran guys on cheap deals. I mean, just look at last year who he brought in. Oh, God. But, it took him like the past six years. 
It's always, been some, it's always been someone. Yeah, it's worked. It's kept the team very competitive. I will I will say that. Or maybe that's just the Bruins mentality, the Boston mentality, and, and how it's kind of resonated with the players, especially even since Char's departure. You know, the, the, a strong captain lineage that, that we've had, uh, and Char, Bergeron, and now Marshawn. But I'm very, I don't know, I'm very hesitant to 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 kind of do this. I I, I think Lysel, and I think we've talked about it, Lysel needs to make the team, in my opinion. I don't think another year of Providence is going to go do him well. Merculo he needs. Go, go ahead about, yeah? Lysel. No, no, I was agreeing. Lysel needs to make the main team. Yeah, yeah. Merkulov, who's showed you a little bit of something, something down on the fourth line when he was playing up here last year, just a little bit. He showed you a little something. Uh, Brazil was the biggest surprise, and Beecher's been a consist a constant piece and a consistent piece as of last year. So I get bringing in a guy like Tyler Johnson, but I'm not too thrilled to continue to hinder um, those players that need to take that next step. So. He's not signed, yeah. so it's only a PTO. Yeah, no, but I mean, um, and, and something that you know, you and I have always agreed with that we don't know why the um, Montgomery always loves to do is you know they always love to change things on the fly. And I mean, I guess that yeah, maybe they, they do. could help. Maybe that could you know maybe that is where Tyler Johnson would come in. And to move every, you know, constantly be changing around and plugging into the piece. Well, there's some talk right now that at least Patra is going to start in Providence to ramp him up. And I think that might be a smart move just because of his shoulder injury yeah. that he had last year. And if you look at what happened to Jamie Drysdale, the Philadelphia Flyers, he re-aggravated that. And I think it, some of these things you just don't want to play around with. But... Until, or at least until he has muscle. But, you know, I, I see Tyler Johnson as a third-line center at best now. You know, he's – you're going to have Trent um, Johnson and what, maybe Geeky or Lysel or Braz. I mean, there's there's options. But I, I think what I want Montgomery to do is I want to I want to start taking too many options away from Montgomery because he has the mentality of, like, you know, you earn your ice. And that's what our coaches always told us, right? You know, you earn your ice time, you work for it. But – when you when you mess with two like the lines way too many times, he's one of the coaches that always does this. It, it impacts the line chemistry, and then it you're taking away from what works or what doesn't work. I don't know. Did any other thoughts on on Tyler Johnson? I, I don't know. I think he's a good player. I just I maybe he's not what the team needs. No, no, definitely agree there. Unless you put him, on, I'm sorry. Unless you put him as the, the the odd man out, like he's like your your 13th forward that that's just kind of sitting there. So I don't know. Why don't we we'll, we'll move on from him because I, I don't know what Sweeney was doing. I don't even know what contract value he's going to get for him. I can't even begin to predict it. I don't think it would be bad if we got him on a cheap deal. But I I, I digress. Yeah, I'm on a cheap deal. I I'm not giving him any more than eight hundred thousand dollars. That's 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 as much as I'm willing to go for him. That that's as much. Anything more than that, I feel like you just go go away. You know. All right. So captain's practice kicked off on the third of, of September, and it was a relatively good attendance. There was some concern um surrounding Pasternak as he didn't show up, I believe it was to the first one or two, and then he started showing showing his face around. Um, but I think it was just because they weren't mandatory and, you know, he, he's probably doing his own thing. He's, yeah. he, he's going to be ready for the season. I wasn't, I'm not too concerned about that. Yeah. I mean, the good news is that the new guys were present. If you, if you look at it, uh, yeah. Jones, the Dorov, um, and Elias Lindholm were, were present. I think it took them also a day to kind of get there, but, you know, they're new. We can give them that. And I think it was a good thing to see their presence. I'm very excited to see them in, in the spoke to be. Um, I think it's good on them that even though these practices are not mandatory, that they're showing up. Um, the fact that they're showing up mean, means a lot. I mean, they're professionals, but I think it also means that they're ready to learn the system and, you know, they're ready to kind of be under uh, Marshawn's wing and, and, uh, leadership. So 
that's something to look forward to, I guess. You know, Lysel was present. That was good. I was happy to see that. So I'm, I'm big on Lysel. Uh, I'm very depressed that Philip Zadina um, did sign over in Europe. I was hoping the Bruins would give him a look. He's um, 24, younger, right wing, right shot. You know, um, that didn't that didn't play out as well. What, by the way, what the hell do we call Zadorov? He's refused to take upon the name Big Z. Big Zaddy. Big Zaddy? Yeah, I've heard that. I don't know if I like the fact that I want to call Zadorov Zaddy. Why not? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not about that. I'm more like maybe little Nikki, maybe Zabuma, like, you know, something. I don't know. Give. I, I don't know how I feel about Zaddy. It just, it's just... We'll see. You know the crowd will definitely let him know what it is. Oh, probably. He's absolutely, you know, said he does not want to be called Big Z. He said that that belongs to Char and Char alone. And I think, you know, that that's very commendable uh, to him. Yeah. I don't know. What number is he wearing? Is he wearing 91? I haven't seen him. I can't remember. I, I know it was presented. But I don't know. I need to find something creative to call Zadorov because I don't know if I can call him Zaddy. It just sounds too much like Daddy. And it's just, I don't know. Backpack of memories. It's, it's yeah, it's yeah, PTSD. it's bringing back, yeah, PTSD, man. I don't know what, what it is. I like little Nikki because he's a big man and it's kind of like you know, like you know, it's like the whole thing with little John and Robin Hood, you know what I mean, or Zabuma because he's, I, I don't know, a clap, clap shot, slap shot. I don't know with, with the English tonight, it's really not in my best favor, but we're here. Um, speaking of captain's practices. Brad Marchand, did you did you see the bit on the amount of sur- the injuries he had and what surgeries he's had this off summer? No, I didn't even know until I looked at our stuff how much stuff that he's gotten done over the season or he, over the off season. He had three surgeries this past summer: an elbow for a torn tendon, groin, and an abdominal surgery. He played through the elbow injury all through 2023-2024, still, yeah, still scored 29 goals. While the other two injuries happened late in the 2023-2024 regular season. But he's expected to be fully healthy and ready for regular seasons, which is which is good. He's skating, so which means it, it the recovery time was not substantial. He's 30, he's gonna be what, 35, 36. You know, it's and he's still one of the best. Ends, but still. Yeah, but he's still one of the best left wingers in the game. And the fact that he was still playing through the majority of those injuries and still being able to recover the puck, still able to score. I mean, look at Pasta. He scored the game-winning goal in Game 7 of the Toronto Maple Leafs series. And he apparently he had this nagging groin injury all season. So hopefully those injuries are all behind them. But I want to give a special credit to – you know, Brad Marchand, he's our big bad Bruin this week who played through several injuries in the playoffs. It's, it's not easy. I mean, everyone does it. I remember in 2019 where Patrice Bergeron um, played through the punctured lung. Chara had a, a fractured face. <laughs> you know, it's players do it. But it when the injury list come out, when you agree that it gets it's just kind of nutty. No, I know. I mean, you cracked your ribs when we used to play hockey, right? Like, you know, you, I cra- I busted my tailbone. You know, but it's it, it it's rough. Like, it's I, I I wouldn't play that. I don't have. I'm, I, maybe I'm just weak. I have no idea. I'm not tough. Not tough. I I was crying. I hurt to poop for a week after I had that that tailbone injury. <laughs> it was terrible. Oh God. I don't know. What do you did did that surprise you? Marshawn being able to play through that or all that or like no because you know as much as of a little shit he is you know he's always one to back up his game and everything he is like one of these best two-way forwards in the game still and I think he takes that all to like a whole different level with his personality and how he presents himself He's, he literally he is the def, like your definition you can't let him know you're injured. He's definitely gone away from the rat like behavior, and it's well, some, yes, he had had to once he got that C. 
I think even before that, I think in the last five years, his game has definitely matured um, better. And I think it's because he knew a leadership role was coming. And I think it was funny when Claude showed up, I guess, in the, in the, during the centennial year, um, Claude had mentioned something and said, like, I got to tell Brad not to do something bleeping stupid, you know, tonight that would cost a, cost them a penalty or something along those lines. So, you know, it's, it's good to see that it's not just the fans that see it, but even, you know, like even the coach is just like, okay, yeah, just don't, don't lick Kadri's face or like, you know, it don't, don't be stupid. So it's, it's nice to see that he's finally grown up, um, to a degree and he is and like you said he's one of the greatest two-way forwards um on the bruins um i think he's one of the best two-way forwards in the league in terms of penalty killing um especially well, yeah. with his his ability to retrieve pucks i mean him and bergeron were i think the best penalty killing tandem in the league in their tenure or at least while on bergeron's tenure with with marsh on 100 um that's not us being biased at all. No, not at all. Not at all. I actually, actually, I did a, I did a video with Vogel about uh, who would you rather, Anz Kopitar or, or Patrice Bergeron. I give a lot of credit to, to, to the other players. I just, you know, th- there is a little bit of, you know, I got those those gold, black and gold sunglasses on. So it's. I it's, mean, even not even that. How there's now the discussion of renaming the Selkie the Bergeron. I'm I don't know if there's an about it actual discussion but i kind of want there's there not to be. like there's there's i don't know if they're like you know behind the scenes and you know, up in the head of the nhl but he's the only hockey, player in the hockey community six. at least i don't think it should be a rebranding but maybe a, a trophy dedicated to bergeron in in some capacity i don't know maybe I actually, I couldn't even describe it to you because what I would describe would be the, the Selkie the best trophy. Best two way forward. Yeah, the best two way forward. You know, but it, it yeah, it, it is a bias. I will say this: I am biased towards Marchand and, and Bergeron, but I will give many, many honorable mention. Nico Heischer is another player. Hans Kopitar is another player. I'll yell, I'll say his name nonstop. Um, you know, th- there's probably a few, a lot more, you know, on there than that. I'm definitely, you know. I'm willing to admit, but none of them specifically come to mind. All right, all right. Let's let's main course here. <laughs> main course, buddy. We just we just had the we just had the appetizer. Okay, we're getting and to the main course. All right? Main course. This let's let's go on Swayman because spitting chicklets. And I, as much as I love Biz and I, I love Ryan Whitney, I love all those guys. I think they do a fantastic job on their podcast and and everything else that they do. Um, they seemingly reported a rumor that the Bruins had initially offered Swayman four years at six point two million dollars. It, it's Wit. It was Wit. Wit did it. Wit yeah. had had a source, and he wasn't sure if he was supposed to say it, but he's gonna say it. No, of course it's it's, it's entertaining. I, I saw on another podcast. I forget what one. Scrolling through TikTok, but and I agree with it. How are you gonna go? From Thomas to Tuca to now Swayman. Yeah, we had a little bit of time with Omar, whatever, but with then, you know, the tandem, but to be your number one guy for several years, how are you gonna fumble the bag like this? That so that's that's what I'm I'm thinking. I don't know why four I, four years doesn't seem right to me. So then what, when he turns 30, you're gonna give him a big bag of money and say, here you go, but it's because the cap went up. I think that's Don's plan, and I think it's a really bad plan. I think he also wants to be able to spend money and get players at the trade deadline. And I'm like, I just think you should just roll with the punches. It's been working for you. It worked for you yeah. last year. What? Okay. Why? What? The, yes, things might not ha- happen to work out throughout the thing, throughout, you know, later on come tra- trade deadline or whatever, we're making a playoff run, whatever happens, you know, that will address that there. But we don't need to worry about saving money for that now. Put it in yeah. the team that we have that literally we base minus a few pieces or whatever, but we pretty much have the same team from last year going into this year. 
better. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a significantly better team than last year. But we still don't know how a lot of those main players play. We're oh, so I I have the Zadorov. I have the utmost I, faith in Zadorov. And I have I have faith, but just you never did. They could completely outshine other players. What if then all of a sudden they out outshine Coyle or um, oh my God, Zaka. Zach is going to the win for sure. But I'm just saying, what if something happens and then one of them becomes trade bait? You never know what happens later on. No, you're you're right. You don't. You don't. And I mean, and then there's all their money get moved. But like you know, this team, though, know, works. Plus, so as we're saying, some pretty good additional factors, and at least Lindholm and, and Zadorov. The but, only question, quote unquote, question mark we have. And, but he's already proven it last year in the playoffs. Is can Swayman actually be that number one guy? Oh, so and yeah, this I is with him being signed. I and think. I'm, the, I think sorry to interrupt you. I think the question mark isn't even the goaltender because if we sign him, I think the question mark is who the hell is your second right wing? They addressed this the one C issue over the summer. They addressed the defense, which really didn't have that many holes in it even last year. But they needed to do something, so they did. They got the Grizzlick was not resigning, and they found a better guy, a bigger, better guy. I think at the form of Zadorov. What if they end up putting in TJ at? TJ Brody? Tyler, Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson? Or, yeah. Maybe he does make the second line. So maybe he does, but then what does that do for Lysel? But uh, but are you, what do you, what does this do with Swayman? Is this in terms of like how pe- how we can no. acquire people or using them as no. trading to, trading tools to get them? Like I'm, I'm no, kinda... no, I'm sorry. No, no, I just kind of started to go off on that. But no, um, the main thing talking about the Swayman and everything. Um, we need to whatever. We need cricket sounds for you. <laughs> it's like the fl- the fireflies. Um, yeah, go ahead. They, we just need to sign him. We don't need to worry about any sort of saving money for anything. Yeah. Wow, genius! <laughs> it took you that long to figure. Out. Yeah, of course we need to sign him. It's just what what's the figure? At this point, and what's the year? It's eight years. I don't care what it is. You got to get him for eight years, and the way I see it, have him till he's 33, 34. I don't give a rat's ass. But offering him 6.2 millions is way too low. That's not even in the realm of possibility for him. Yeah, but I don't see these $10 million that you're seeing out there. I don't think those are real either. No, I don't think he should get $10 million. The, the rumor, but, there was another rumor. There were two rumors. There were, the, the, he wants a McAvoy like contract. So that's about 9.3. Not getting it. I don't think. And you shouldn't get it to him. Sorry. In $10 million. Definitely not getting that. I, I, I looked at, looked at it and I'm like, yes, you had a phenomenal playoff performance this past season. You, he, he kept us in it the entire time. It, nothing that, that was it. The, he won us that leap series. I don't care what anyone else says. If people say otherwise, you weren't watching the same games. We weren't watching the same games. He kept us in the Florida Panthers games. You can say he let in six goals, like, what, once or twice? Yeah, you weren't beating that Florida Panthers team. It, it didn't matter. He kept you in it as long as you were put, like, as long as you were able to move. But they eventually broke through. But to add to that, they he's also split time – in his entire tenure with the Bruins, you know, he has not played a single season where he's played more than 50 games, which is the typical full-time ask. Or more, actually. 60 games, I'm going to say, is probably the typical ask, right, of a, of a start of a full one-time starting goaltender. Meet you in the middle, 55, we'll say. Sure. Either way, he's Whatever. missed 11 to 16 games to kind of call him that full-time goaltender. And you want to dare ask for ten million dollars, nine million dollars? I I'm 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 actually capping you at nine. I don't think you should make more than that. You need a prove it deal. You do. The, the, this year maybe was maybe that's what they're talking about with that four year deal. When he you know cap is going to be more up, and we can pay him more money, and it's not going to affect the team as much. 
If he that's just if he wants nine million dollars or ten million dollars, I'm happy to give him eight at eight. I'm happy to give him that because I think he's earned that. I think anything more than that, you're or even anything more than eight and a half, I, I just question a bit. I think he's the guy. I think he could, he's going to prove it. There's no question in my mind. I love Swayman, but I think the ask of anything over nine million dollars or close to ten million dollars, I you what stance do you have? Hellebuck makes that money. Vasilevsky makes that money. But Hellebuck has been the starting goaltender for Winnipeg since he's gotten there, for the most part, I should say. Vasilevsky has two rings. Who else makes that much money? You're the most comparable person he is is to Yossi Saros, and I think he makes eight and a half. So give him eight and a half at eight. So that's 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 where I have him at. I think that's a fair enough deal for both ends. No, I'm not. But like, no, I'm going to be so mad at Sweeney if he just gives like a short term contract high amount of money because I'm going to be like, okay, good. So then what? You're going to give him ten million dollars over the four years is up? I'll scream. I'll cry. Look how well it worked for Carey Price. Didn't. He got a knee injury, and then they Montreal fans, especially Rick in the background, was probably crying about it. Nordy is still crying about it. I don't know. What anyway. what what value do you give him at? I yeah, I, I don't go anything over nine. I want him at I, I think eight and a half is a fair deal for him. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's that that's where I have him. He they're gonna get him signed. They 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 the Chicklets also reported that they were nowhere close and that they haven't talked to him in Three in weeks. weeks. Yeah, but he was skating on the ice and he was in the same arena as them. They've definitely talked. They just weren't calling. They didn't need to. I think when you're when you're right in the wheelhouse, right? Like something doesn't add up to me right there, right? Like, you know, when you're sitting in the in the locker room I with bet someone. Just that I'm stirring the pot and getting clicks. Well then you need to stop because it's it's I am clicking on it because it's clickbait. It's swaying. Exactly. I married the guy if he wasn't already married to old Mark. <laughs> no, it's 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 just like you know, it's gonna get done. It's a matter of when, not if. Um, ideally, I like to see it done before um, before uh, the start of preseason, at least. Give him a couple warm up games, and then that way he's a hot goaltender going in. Otherwise, if he really wants that amount of money, I know they'll they'll give it to him, and they'll end up trading Corpusalo. That's what they're gonna have to do, and they'll have to attach a pick with it. So. That, that's my thoughts on Swayman. State of the team. So. Oh, we kind of already hit this. Not not necessarily. This is this is from a different perspective. So this is from prospect ranking. And so as the Bruins sit, they're in the bottom, I believe, eight in terms of prospect ranking and prospect pool. I don't think that matters right now. And many people will probably disagree with me. And I know Rick and other members of the team and Matt like to throw this kind of saying like, oh, well, this is where you're ranked. This is where you're ranked, especially Alex, too. And I said, right, but it doesn't really matter if my top talent on the team is in their youthful prime. Pasta and the the majority of the top six are 30 and under. So they have another six years, seven years, probably. The defense... Majority of them are under 30. And, you know, we just retained or just started getting our first round picks back. I think we can still plan ahead for the future. I just don't think our prospect pool ranking right now matters when we're still a competitive team. And we have our number one goaltender for eight more years. I don't think it's going to start becoming a problem until a few more years. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, no, as you are saying, like, we have a lot of our guys, and quote-unquote, with a good amount of their prime years left, or in the middle, maybe back half of their, quote-unquote, prime. Those youth players, yeah, as we were saying earlier, those borderline uh, Providence bottom six people, they are developing, but the, we don't need that. Where the team's in a good state of where we're at right now, and if nothing happens in the next four years, we have pretty much the same team. I feel like 
everyone's still going to be at a good rate of play. You know, they're not going to be out of their prime. You know, not not out of their prime, but they'll be at they'll be connecting and they will be at a. Uh... Right. I don't. I don't want to say that prospects aren't important. They are. I just don't think right now they're as important as we need them to be. Merkulov can come up and replace Marshawn. I think Marshawn will have two more years under his belt after this year. That gives us time. And I think there will be a couple of years within that time span where we have the majority of our players where we're not going to be in the top 16. We might be in the, like, maybe top yeah. 24. We're not in a rebuilding stage. Yeah, so it's it's. I don't think we're there yet. And I think if Sweeney starts realizing that and builds his assets better, because he just built a very strong defense in my mind. He has a deeper Bruins team. They're all big. Stanley Cup contenders, I don't know if I want to say that, but they're definitely a playoff team. And you think for now. In the playoffs. Yeah, that's what I think. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this uh, night's episode of Hibernation. Um, we're back to our weekly schedule, so expect to hear from us every Monday. So that's when our episodes will release, probably around 4 p.m. Um, Eastern time. Um, let us know what you guys think in the comment section. We're just excited as you to see some hockey brewing. With that being said, you stay classy, San Diego. <laughs>